Yesterday, the governors of Texas and Mississippi lifted their state's mask mandates and removed all of their COVID restrictions. Restaurants and other businesses will be 100% open with absolutely no masks required. Texas and Mississippi are going directly against the CDC warning for states to keep restrictions in place. Lifting restrictions now could cause cases and deaths to go up because of new variants. And here's the thing. Only 7% of the people in Texas right now are vaccinated, which means 93% of them are not protected from catching or transmitting COVID-19. And people in Texas are still dying. Just as many just as many are now dying now as they were during the surge back in August. And in the state of Mississippi, even the top health officer says there is still a relatively high rate of transmission. President Biden had this to say about the two states lifting restrictions. I think it's a big mistake. Look, I hope everybody's realized by now these masks make a difference. We are on the cusp of being able to fundamentally change the nature of this disease because of the way in which we're able to get vaccines in people's arms. And the last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine, take off your mask, forget it. It still matters. You heard him. The president called it Neanderthal thinking. And joining us now is Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. She is the top elected official in the county that includes Houston. And Jonathan Capehart, he's back. He's a member of the Washington Post editorial board and the host of The Sunday Show with Jonathan Capehart on MSNBC. Judge Hidalgo, let's start with you. You and the Houston mayor both suggested that Governor Abbott may be trying to distract people from the fact that Texas just had like a huge disaster with and through a climate crisis that left millions of their people without power and water for days in freezing cold temperatures. So unpack all of that for us. Do you think that Governor Abbott's just trying to sort of get us to look over over here because he just messed up a huge thing very recently. Yeah, look, we can't avoid that there's been a lot of attention, national attention lately on the failures of the state power grid and and the timing is a little bit suspect. But I, I think the biggest issue is that uh, we're focusing on, on these culture wars. Uh, we're focusing on uh, emotion as opposed to really working together and, and following the experts and following the numbers when it comes to dealing with this virus. We are at a point where soon enough, you know, in a few months, we'll be able to return to some semblance of normalcy. We have that hope with the vaccines, but we're not there yet. And, and this wholesale uh, removal of the public health interventions in Texas, my concern and what I'm hearing from the community is it's very easy for them to take it as an all clear. And that's a recipe for more deaths and more hospitalizations. I hope it won't be, but it's certainly likely. But do you get the sense that people will respond that way? I mean, I obviously anecdotally saw some people tweeting about this yesterday who live in Texas. And it seems to me that, you know, people don't want to catch COVID. So even if the governor says everything's open, you don't need a mask. I think the message now with most people, I don't know how it is in Texas, is that, oh, no, I'm still going to be wearing this mask until uh, I get a vaccine. But what's it like on the ground there? Do you get the sense that people understand that they still need these restrictions, even if their governor doesn't think so? You know, I, I wish you were right. I hope you are right. But but history doesn't quite bear that out. We had a mask mandate here in Harris County that I put in place uh, for, for the Houston area and folks were wearing their masks. And then within a couple of days, the governor uh, eliminated my ability to, to, to impose that, that, that uh, requirement. And you could see it, you know, it was, it was almost overnight. Folks stopped wearing it. Then the state reinstituted the mandate. Folks were wearing their masks again. It's like seat belts, right? They're not optional. They're enforceable. Uh, so many other uh, restrictions that are designed to keep the community safe. There's a reason why there's there, they're there. A lot of us, to us, it's sort of common sense. But to a lot of people, you know, they don't want to be the only ones that are doing something that's voluntary and uncomfortable. So I don't put this in, on the community. It should be the responsibility of government to keep us safe during a disaster, whether it's a winter storm or whether it is, you know, this this pandemic. And that's why we need to not, not give in to the, the temptation of these culture wars, which, you know, it, 
it seems to be that's what this mask issue is all about. I mean, the downside is a little bit of discomfort for a few more months, and, and we are saving lives with it. That's such an interesting point about the, it being a culture war as opposed to just what the scientists are recommending. So, Jonathan, what's your view on these actions taken by governors in Texas and the Mississippi? I know that, you know, if I lived in one of those states, I'd be like, my mask is staying on my face. I don't know what Greg <laughs> Abbott's talking about, but I'm going to do this because I understand the science of the thing. Well, we're talking about two states with Republican governors. And it's as if they're still fighting the old war when President Trump was in office and he couldn't care less about the pandemic, thought that everything should open up, even though we now know he knew how dangerous this pandemic uh, was and remains. And so I look at what Mississippi and, and Texas is doing as just thumbing their nose, not only at science, but at President Biden. And it is my, it, it's my hope, and I, and I hear you judge, um, it's my hope that Texans and folks in Mississippi look at it and say, okay, yeah, governors, you're saying everything is opening, but I'm taking, I'm keeping my mask on because as you said, Zerlina, I don't want to catch COVID uh, and I want to be around to, when my vaccine appointment comes around, I want to be, I want to be healthy enough to, to get it. But I mean, seriously, to your to to your um, contention that maybe perhaps Greg Governor Abbott is trying trying to distract from from the horror that hit Texas with those storms. Mm -hmm. Think about that. People lost their lives, lost heat, water, food, everything, and so he's going to distract from that disaster by putting more people's lives at risk. And that to me is above all else, the most reprehensible thing. Yeah, I mean, it's so weird that uh, people are equating like not wearing a mask with like freedom. I'm like, life is the, before the word liberty. You guys uh, read the documents. Uh, Dr. Doggo, with businesses open at 100% capacity and customers coming in without masks, it feels to me like there's going to be more people that are more vulnerable, you know, people that are just going to the grocery store and doing their normal errands. But now that you have businesses completely open, like God knows who um, is coming in and out without masks in these indoor settings. So in, in terms of who's most at, most at risk from uh, the governor moving, removing these restrictions, who's in that bucket? You know, there's been uh, this sort of false dichotomy created between the economy and public health. And the reality is uh, here on the ground, what I'm seeing is a, a lot of businesses, uh, school districts saying, you know, we're going to maintain those restrictions because we need to protect our customers and we need to protect our employees. Now, a lot of them on the other side, though, you know, it's hard for them when they don't have that cover from the state, from the, the scientists at the state level being able to say what, you know, what the truth of the matter is. So obviously folks that are uh, that are more at risk, those employees that don't have an option whether or not to come to work, they've been affected, they're going to continue mm -hmm. to be affected. But but also it's a, has an economic impact. You know, some of the business leaders I'm talking to are telling me, you know, if half the people aren't wearing masks, the other half is going to feel uncomfortable. They're going to want to leave, you know, so that's less mm -hmm. business. So that's why it it just it doesn't add up. And what I'm telling my community is we need to continue wearing those masks. We need to continue to avoid gatherings. This is by no means an all clear, but it's, it sure is hard to get that message across when, you know, first the conflicting messaging was from the federal government. Now we're seeing it again from the state and, and for the community it's like, OK, well, what, do you, what do you want me to do? So I'm trying <clears throat> to be very, very clear. Jonathan, looking at the politics of it, um, I think, you know, this is an opportunity in this moment for Democrats to point out, um, perhaps, that, you know, the Republican trend of getting government out of everything um, and, you know, leaning into these culture war fights um, hasn't ended up with great outcomes for their constituents uh, of these Republican states. Do you think Democrats will be able to use the governor's handling of the pandemic and also the power failures and the water crisis uh, against him in upcoming elections on the state level? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's not like they have to try very hard. Um, you know, everyone's paying attention. And plus you have people on the ground who won't soon forget uh, being without without heat, 
hot water, living in uncomfortable, unsanitary conditions for a long for a long time, simply because of this mantra of you know we want government so out of our lives that we don't we don't care about the power grid. We don't need to weatherize our our power systems. So yeah, Democrats can and should and must use these failures of governance. This isn't just about politics. This is about governing. This is about protecting the people in your states. And under under Republican rule, particularly under the rule of of Governor Abbott, he's not protecting his his citizens. And here's the thing that's um, a couple things are most crucial. One, the COVID relief bill is very popular among Republicans. So this idea that Republicans are going to try to stop the COVID relief bill, trying to stop science, trying to stand in the way of people getting try, getting us beyond the pandemic, that's not going to play well in, in, in the long term. And then the other thing is, and this is what's so heartbreaking about what Governor Abbott did and the governor of Mississippi. We are so close, so close to getting on the other side of this thing and really being on a downward trajectory when it comes to hospitalizations, infections, death rates, and to have the governors of Texas and Mississippi right when we're almost like within reach of getting to, starting to get to the other side, they decide to fling open the doors. And what's that going to do? We've seen this movie before. Infections are gonna go back up. Hospitalizations are gonna go back up. Deaths are gonna go back up. And in the end, it's going to be those numbers that tell the story in a way that Democrats don't even need to. Well, we will see how this all plays out. And I am so fascinated by the state of Texas and the statewide politics. Judge Lena Hidalgo and Jonathan Capehart, thank you so much for being here tonight uh, to talk about all of this. Please stay safe. And you can watch Jonathan, and you should, because I do. Uh, you can watch Jonathan on The Sunday Show with Jonathan Capehart. It's every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern on MSNBC. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.